What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, back with episode 2 of Endgame. The series where we take a look at some tips, tricks, and mods you can do to your gaming peripherals. And last August was episode 1, so my bad for the wait. And there we did some mods for your gaming mic, so check that out if you haven't already. Today we're going to be focusing on gaming keyboards. If you see anything you like, I'll have it all listed for you in the description down below so you can check it out. And we're going to start off with this silicone roll, which is a great alternative to EVA foam. So this roll I got on Amazon is 25 and a half by 19 and a half inches, comes in at 1.8 millimeters thick, so it's not going to have any issues fitting into the bottom of your case under the PCB. It can naturally be compressed as well, and you may even want to double up and use two pieces depending on your build. There's obviously nothing wrong with foam in a keyboard, obviously. In fact, if you have foam at all, it's considered a luxury nowadays, but just when comparing the two materials side by side, silicone is going to do a better job dampening that resonance. So for my insert, I'm tracing the foam pad that did come inside the keyboard. You can trace a dampener that you have to get the exact dimensions, or use a ruler, kind of eyeball it, and cut your own insert. Then from there, I'm going to cut it down, trim it down, so it's nice and snug to the bottom of the keyboard. For things like the holes for these standoffs and routing cables, just mark that as well when you're tracing the template. And since it's only 1.8 millimeters thick, again, you can easily just stab your scissors through, create the cutouts, it's arts and crafts all over again. But it is really just super quick and easy to do. This is going to be going inside a completely plastic housing for the keyboard. So the results with the silicone versus the foam insert should definitely be worth it. And once it's inside and you have it properly applied, you can reapply the screws, fasten it all back down. Again, with this silicone material, it's going to slightly compress. It'll let you press it back down together with no issues at all. And also provide sort of a softer give when you're typing as the internals press down onto the silicone. This is how it now sounds with the new dampener. So as you heard from the sound test, you can probably tell the silicone dampener does a lot better of a job than the foam dampener does when it comes to keeping those higher pitched resonance sounds down inside. Because again, it's an all plastic body there, so it absorbs that a lot better. And especially with the space bar, it sounds a lot less high pitched. Now next up isn't a mod, but it's more so a tip that I give you guys. And I guarantee you nine times out of 10, when you buy a keyboard, you toss the box and the packaging aside, but inside those boxes, most likely, comes with this little plastic cover. Again, you probably threw it out or it's still in the box. And these plastic covers are absolutely fantastic for being a dust cover on your desktop. Especially if you have pets everywhere and there's a lot more hair flying everywhere, a lot more dust around you. This is going to do a great job of pretty much eliminating that. I know it sounds stupid, and again, this isn't like a world-shattering reveal to you guys, but if you still have your keyboard box, check it. You might have one of these in there. Just put it back on your keyboard at night. If you're going to be out for a few days, keep that dust collecting in your keyboard down to a minimum. And it really didn't even occur to me until a few months back when I bought this actual acrylic keyboard cover that I used on my display shelf behind me. Then I started noticing that every keyboard I got in also came with one of these. So I was like, why pay 25 bucks for this when you get one of these in the box for free? So again, a little tip for you guys. Now is a loop station from Space Cables, a 63 slot sheet of acrylic for disassembling, organizing, and lubing the anatomy of your key switches. And I'm sure you're familiar with Space Cables and their actual custom cables they make, but the loop station here is gonna be a must have accessory for anyone in the community, because obviously when it comes to customizing your keyboard, once you're down that rabbit hole, lubing your switches is just another Tuesday. So with the 63 switch slots, it has a fitted cutout for the bottom housing of your switch, and above that is a slot for the stem to sit. And this layout and the whole purpose of this loop station really is just for the ease and convenience of the assembly line production. It's all laid out in front of you. You lube housing by housing, spring by spring, stem by stem. Lube your switches in that tedious fashion like workers do on an assembly line. 
This also makes it really easy for when you're done and it's time to reassemble the switches because all you do is just pop back on the housing and you keep it moving. Now, there's a lot of different loop stations out there, different colors, materials, some have different cutouts even, but I mean really they all do the same thing at the end of the day. And I like the size of this one personally because it's about the size of a keyboard as it is and it fits perfectly with my keyboard kit, which I'll show you in just a minute. This one's only $30. And real quick, so I was just using it, that stem holder that I had that was keeping the stem in place so I can lube it, that's actually a gemstone tong. And they're used by jewelers when it comes to, you know, like handling uh, little tiny gemstones. But it also works great for switch stems. Companies do sell like keyboard branded ones anywhere from like five to 10 bucks. I got this just generic gemstone one on Amazon for like six and again, gets the job done perfectly. You don't have to physically hold and touch the stem and worry about getting lube all in your hands. The little prongs here works out great. But now we could talk about the star of the show, my custom keyboard building kit, Prep Deck. And I've shown a glimpse of this in the past, yes, I talked about it here and there, but this series is just a perfect fit to showcase it. And the prep deck product itself is actually intended for the kitchen. It's made for prepping and organizing meals and ingredients while you're cooking, but we're cooking up something else, keyboards. So I bought this and completely repurposed it for the hobby because if you think about it, this is literally perfect for it and all the accessories you need when it comes to building a custom keyboard. It has five removable containers for storage, perfect for keeping loose switches. Up top is a spot for spices originally, but I've got vials of lube conveniently stored there at an arm's reach. Then on each side of the prep deck are two pull-out drawers for even more storage. In one, I've got brushes, tweezers, switch pullers, extra lube, dielectric grease. Most of my tools get stored here. Then in the other drawer is a perfect spot for all my switch films, foam and dampening pads, bump-ons. The dimensions of the compartments here are literally perfect, like it was made for keyboards. Each of the containers also has an internal storage inserts. I keep things like stabilizers, springs, all that stuff nice and organized. Then I can just queue up switches I need to lube and keep them here for the next build or project. And since the fold out lip is like a cutting board originally, here is where I put the loop station. And now the entire prep deck comes to life and makes my life a hell of a lot easier and a hell of a lot more organized. And I just really can't think of a better all in one kit like this. Then when you're all done, you fold it back up, put it away until the next build. And space wise, it's really nice and compact. So this whole thing started as an Instagram ad that I saw. It kept getting served to me over and over and I always thought like it looked cool, but I had no purpose for it. Then one day it just clicked and I was like, this is the perfect kit for keyboards. So I picked it up. I believe it's around like 120 bucks. I think Amazon has it for hundred. There's different like colors and styles you can get for the actual fold out lip and stuff. So again, if you need something like this, I'm sure odds are a lot of you do. If you're into the whole keyboard community and stuff, I think hands down, it's one of the best all in one solutions for a keyboard kit like this. So guys, that'll wrap it up for episode two of Endgame. Hope you enjoyed. Like I said, I'll have all the stuff we showed off for you guys in the description down below. And give me your thoughts and ideas for episode three. What peripheral or sort of mods do you wanna see for an upcoming episode? If you like this episode, give it a big thumbs up and show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.